Hello and welcome to Lesson 5 of Software Design and Development for National 5 Computing Science. We're continuing with selection today, but we're going to get into slightly more complex if statements, but they'll still be known as simple if statements because they will have a single condition. We'll get to complex conditions next lesson, but today we're going to improve upon these programs that we've written. We're going to do it by creating a new REPL. I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call it Selection 3. I know these aren't very imaginative names, but it'll help when it comes to looking back on these programs when you're doing your coursework or when you're trying to remind yourself of how you did these in the past. So previously, we only had an if and an else. We had a condition where if that condition turned out to be true, it would perform some code. Otherwise, it would perform some other code. Well, in this case, we're going to have multiple options. So these are going to be called if, else if, and else. Now let's uh, use the example of movies again. Now previously we only had one movie and if you're old enough to watch it we said you were old enough, otherwise we said you were too young. But as you all know when you go to the pictures it's not just one film that they're showing, they're going to be showing multiple films. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to list some 18 plus movies, some 15 plus movies, uh, some 12 plus movies and some PG films. There we go. So 18 plus, 15 plus, 12 plus and some PG. Some great movies. So what we're going to do, we're going to get the user's age again. So we're going to say age equals, and age is a whole number, so that's an integer. We're going to get it as an input from the keyboard, and we're going to ask the user to enter your age. Now, what do we do? If the age is 18 or over, we tell the user they can watch these films. Okay. You can watch. And on a new line, I'm going to print... Mortal Kombat, and on a new line, Crash. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to do something that most teachers would hate. That's copy and paste. I'm going to do these as separate if statements. Now the reason copy and pasting is okay when you're doing programming is because this is my code that I just wrote. So I can copy and paste my code. This is extremely common in the software development world. Copying and pasting code, reusing code that's already been written. There's no point in recreating the wheel, reinventing the wheel. There's no point putting in double the work when you can copy and paste something that works perfectly well. And in fact, I'm going to copy and paste the names of these films as well. It's not lazy, it's efficient. I'm going to copy and paste this again for the 12 plus. And for the final ones, PG, well, what we could do is we could just print those at the end. Now this program doesn't look too bad. It kind of looks like it's going to do what we want. We get the user's age. If they're 18 or over, they can watch Mortal Kombat and Crash. If they're 15 or over, you can watch Deadpool and John Wick. 12 or over, you can watch Mean Girls and Twilight, amazing films. And everyone can watch Frozen and Home Alone. So if we run this, how does it look? Let's say we are 19 years old. So it's saying you can watch Mortal Kombat Crash, you can watch Deadpool John Wick, you can watch Mean Girls Twilight, you can watch Frozen Home Alone. Now this is true, but there's something I don't like about this, and that is that it's repeating you can watch multiple times. So how do we fix that? Well, because everyone can watch something, we only need to say you can watch once. So instead of having that there, and here, and here, and here, we could just print it at the very start. So this will print no matter what. And as we go through, it's just going to display the names of the films. So let's try that one more time. This is much better. We're saving a bit of lines of, of output. We've seen, saved a few lines of coding as well. And if I'd thought of this at the start, it would have saved me a bit of time. But this looks much better. And then if I type in an age that is 15 plus, let's say I'm 16, we've missed out Mortal Kombat and Crash because I'm not old enough for those. So this is working perfectly well. But it looks very inefficient because we've used separate if statements. And I said in the previous lesson that you don't normally want to use separate if statements, especially if you're checking the same thing each time. But in this instance, it's probably the best idea. And you'll see why. Let's do another program as an example. Let's create a new program. We'll call this selection four. We'll create the REPL. And this example is going to calculate your grade based on the percentage you scored in your test. Now let's say your percentage equals a float, because percentages are often decimals. You could get like 57.5%, 95.6% and so on. So we're going to get that from the keyboard as an input and we're going to ask the user to enter your 
percentage. I'm going to widen this a wee bit. There we go. Then what we're going to say is, if the percentage is greater than or equal to 70, then we print, you got an A. Incredible. Now, previously we'd learned that you can say else you didn't get an A. But as you know, A is not the only grade that you can get. Right? I could get 80% where I got an A. Or I could have gotten 40% where I didn't get an A. But these aren't the only options. Now let's say we want other options. Let's get rid of the else. And this is where the else if comes in. Now most programming languages call it the else if. But in Python, it's called an elif. It just, it's just short for else if. So if we got greater than 70, we got an A. But what if we didn't get greater than 70, but we do want to check something else? This is the elif. So otherwise, if per percentage was greater than or equal to 60, then what did we get? You got a B. And we can do it again for a C. Elif percentage is greater than or equal to 50. Then we print, you got a C. Now, if we didn't get a C, let's not include a D. Let's just say it's A, B, or C, or fail. This is where the else would come in. Because if we didn't get more than 70, and we didn't get more than 60, and we didn't get more than 50, what are we left with? The only other option is fail. You failed, sadly. So now we've covered all the options. So let's enter a percentage. Let's say we're geniuses, 77%. That's an A. Let's say we did really well, got 65, that's still a B. Let's say we did okay, we got we got a pass, no problem, that's a C. But let's say we haven't been doing our revision, we kind of suck a wee bit, 40%. Quite sad, we failed. So as you can see, we, we've managed to test this program and we figured out that every single grade works properly. We can double check by testing it right on the boundaries as well. Let's say we got exactly 70%. That should be an A, right? 70 or more is an A. Perfect. And we can do it again for a, for a C, 50%. All right, that's beautiful. So it seems to be working very well. What if we get, say, 49.9 recurring? Yeah. So it does recognize that it's less than 50, or it's not equal or greater than 50. So this program looks perfect. Now, why does this program work using ELIFs, but the other one wouldn't? The one with the films. Let's go back to it. That was selection three. Now, if you can't see Selection 3 when you go to home, go to My Repls. And here it is, Selection 3. You can delete these comments for now. Now, why would this not work? Well, if I were to change these to elifs, and this one to an else, and indent those bottom two lines, what's going to happen is, if you're over 18, it's going to say that you can watch Mortal Kombat and Crash, and then it's going to skip the rest of this if statement. Let's test it to prove it. So let's say we're 19 years old. It's saying you can watch Mortal Kombat and Crash. Which is true, I can watch those. But what about Deadpool? That's an awesome film. Same with John Wick. What about Twilight and Mean Girls? They're amazing. And Home Alone, all time great. And Frozen is dynamite as well. That's why... In the previous example, it was okay to only have separate if statements and not join them using the L if. But it's a very rare case and you have to figure out whether your program requires separate if statements or whether it can be more efficient by using L ifs. So that's lesson five. We continued with if statements, but instead of just if and else, we've included L if. Next time we're going to do complex conditions. I'll see you then.